In the heart of Toronto's financial district proudly stands the headquarters of one of the largest accounting firms in the country. But there's a big secret that giant KPMG would have preferred to keep in the dark. An alleged offshore scheme to conceal the fortunes of some of its wealthiest clients. This can be an enormous problem. The universe of the taxpayers that actually bought and implemented these transactions could be very large. It crosses the line. It's clearly a case where it could lead to a criminal investigation. Who are those rich KPMG clients? And why is the investigation seemingly stalled in court? Why are you not giving the names to the revenue agency? On the West Coast in early January 2014, the Vancouver Board of Trade had a special guest on stage. Mr. Harper, thank you very much. I want to thank you for your strong leadership. The MC was Elio Luongo, a Tory appointee to the Competition Tribunal and the top KPMG tax executive in Canada. Oh, that's great. KPMG has a stellar reputation as a firm Ottawa calls on to keep an eye on the books and investigate fraud against the public treasury. But while Luongo was on stage with the Prime Minister, another scandal had been quietly brewing for months, but this time KPMG itself was at the centre of it. KPMG's troubles started here in beautiful Victoria, B.C. An elderly businessman from South Africa, Peter Cooper, moved here in the late 1990s with his two adult sons, Marshall and Richard. They all bought expensive homes in posh neighborhoods and lived a good life. Yet, they declared very low incomes to the revenue agency for almost a decade and paid little or no taxes at all. They even received thousands of dollars from governments in various tax credits. Richard claimed tax credits to renovate his million-dollar home. But in 2012, an auditor for the revenue agency discovered that far from being poor, the Coopers had accumulated a lot of wealth, a whopping $26 million. According to the revenue agency, all that money had been hidden in a KPMG offshore plan that deceived the public treasury. We decide to look for the Coopers in the Victoria suburb of Oak Bay. We find Marshall Cooper at home. Hi, Governor. I've been drawn into this, Richie. I don't think I should have been in, in the first place. So, uh, I think you, again, you've got to speak to KPMG. I, I went to the best people in, in the country, I thought, and, and to advise. You should go and speak to them. Okay. The local KPMG accountant that the Coopers contacted was Daryl Norgard. He's now in private practice. Sorry, guys, it's like the worst day possible. It's a tax day. When we contacted him in May, Norgard said he couldn't talk at all about client matters. The KPMG plan was surprisingly simple. Their clients in Victoria, the Coopers, would claim to give away all their millions to a corporation registered in a tiny self-governing British Crown dependency located between Britain and Ireland, the Isle of Man. But did they really give all their money away? Or did they just pretend to? We leave for the Isle of Man to find out. We are joined by one of Canada's top experts on tax law, André Laroux from Laval University. He's a bit like the Indiana Jones of tax professors. This year, he's been traveling the globe, unearthing the mysteries of offshore havens. The Isle of Man is a cold, wind-battered, rocky outpost in the middle of the Irish Sea. It's not your typical tax haven with sun-drenched tropical beaches, but this tiny country can be a formidable fortress for those seeking to hide their assets. We arrive on Tinwall Day, their national holiday celebrating the oldest continuously operating parliamentary body in the world. Isle of Man lawmakers have been adopting legislation very favorable to offshore businesses. Companies registered here pay no corporate taxes at all. 
trying to find there's so many people from uh, officials maybe here in the government. Several public officials are in attendance. And some are quite easy to spot. I think I need to be going in. We catch up with Steve Roden, the Speaker of the House of Keys, just before the official ceremony begins. The Iron Man has, has been described by some as a tax evader. Maybe it's just, maybe it's not. It's a tax efficient jurisdiction. Uh, uh, Tax haven is a term of abuse these days. We're open and transparent. Anyone can come in and look at the books. We've no secrecy here, no banking secrecy. If it's a transparent jurisdiction, we shouldn't have any problem finding information on the Coopers. So the following day, we head to Douglas, the capital and largest town on the island. This is where the financial services industry is concentrated. Even KPMG has a local office here. They were coming to the bank section. We reached a corporate registry, hoping to find information about the Coopers. So we we're looking for names of directors and shareholders. And links with relation type of thing with Canada. According to the Canada Revenue Agency, the Coopers transferred $26 million to an Isle of Man corporation called Ogrel in 2002. But you'd never know it by looking at the registry. Everywhere we look, though, there's no Cooper anywhere. That's right. No, they don't appear anywhere. Why would somebody relinquish the rights to this amount of money to benefit a Isle of Man company of which they are not directors of, of which they are not shareholders of? It doesn't make any sense at all. Maybe someone at Ogrel could explain why the Coopers were so generous as to give their fortune to some people they didn't know in the Isle of Man. The corporate registry provided us with an address, 14 Athol Street. Once we reach the top, something seems a bit odd. It's awfully quiet here. The door is unlocked. We venture inside. Wow, literally. This is wow. completely empty. There's not a single soul on this floor. Nobody here. We ask for help from a friendly tenant one floor below. And these guys, they moved out a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And I believe they're down on the key. Just as the weather is about to turn again, we continue our search for the elusive Ogrel Corporation, but it's proving hard to find. Oh, okay. There's two big office blocks there. Yeah. That's one, there's one next to it. So you go yeah. on the front of them. This seems to be it, but good luck getting inside. How do we get there? You go around the back. Yeah. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Taking a shortcut to the back alley, we enter through the back door. <laughs> Can I help you? Yes, we're, we're looking to speak with someone uh, from uh, Ogrel Company. Can you tell me where you're from? Yeah, please? from Canada. So my okay. name is Frederick Zell. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you just um, wait here? Yeah. For sure. Because yeah. I haven't got any facilities. Sure, sure. sure, sure. sure, sure. Yeah, Wouldn't yeah. mind just waiting. We're looking at a chair. Okay. We should have reception. Two people are sent down to meet us at the bottom of the emergency stairwell. CBC producer Harvey Cashor's camera is rolling. Could you just tell us who is behind Ogrel? Who is that? I'd say to turn the camera yeah. off. Do you remember Marshall Cooper? We, we, we wouldn't comment. You wouldn't comment on the Coopers? We, we wouldn't no comment on the comments at all. But you were on the you, you were a shareholder of the of the companies. But we wouldn't, why would we discuss, we wouldn't discuss client business with any other than clients? But, we have nothing further to add. But if they're not paying taxes in Canada, is that not an important issue for us to discuss? I've been nothing further to add. Can I ask you how you came in touch with KPMG Canada? How they contacted you? I have no further no, comments. We have, no, we have no more comments to make, gentlemen. I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you to leave now. We didn't get much answers, but we got a lot of, uh, of non-answers. Uh, and to me, this is sort of important because you could see there was something going on there. Is it see? Mm -hmm. We have one more lead, the address of another company, Cordery, that is listed as being one of the shareholders of Ogrel. But the company is actually being dissolved because it has 
nothing to do with any, it's all completely transferred out of everything. So a quarter is, is yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, it was only a nominee share of the company anyway, so it's it's gone. Okay. Well, and what happened with the share you held in Orville, for instance? Um, I'm sorry, I can't actually discuss that with you. It's all it's confidential. So I'll ask you one more. Sorry. What's a nominee service anyway? What? A nominee service. Yeah. It's just a service that you provide a shareholder. For what reason? Like, what's the, what's the reason for why you go? Confidentiality. Going? What kind of confidentiality? Like, what do you mean confidentiality? Like. Well, confidentiality. There's a thick wall between the real owner and the mechanism that was created there. It's totally foggy there. It's, you, you don't see a thing between the Coopers and the Orgel company. What's more, Canadian tax authorities say that over the years, the Isle of Man Corporation sent millions back to the Coopers in Canada, labeled as non-taxable gifts. But the revenue agency says the whole thing is a sham and has slapped the Coopers with millions in civil penalties. The Coopers and KPMG lawyers are firing back. They are appealing in tax court. Could there be criminal charges in a case like this one? Well, criminal charges means they're, they're, that they have to prove the intention to fraud the system. It's clearly a case where it could lead to criminal investigation because obviously there were things that were done here that were not in line with reality. The Isle of Man has lived up to its reputation as an impenetrable fortress. But how many other rich Canadians did KPMG entice to this island? When we come back, an investigation mysteriously on hold. We're talking huge amounts of money here that the government is losing. Hello, Dennis Howlett here. From his small office in Ottawa, Dennis Howlett runs a group called Canadians for Tax Fairness. Earlier this year, he heard about a federal court case involving the accounting firm KPMG. Initially, I thought, oh, this is great. The government's doing something on this file. There's been a lot of public pressure, a lot of media attention to tax havens. And uh, maybe this is a case where they're going to try and do something about it. The case was called Minister of National Revenue versus KPMG. The file showed that in June 2012, the revenue agency called KPMG's Elio Luongo. The agency was seeking the names of all the other clients involved in the Isle of Man offshore structure, even obtaining a judge's order to do so. KPMG had 60 days to comply, but it refused. It argued in court the revenue agency was on a fishing expedition and that its charter rights had been violated. On the face of it, it's very simple. It's KPMG, give us uh, names of some of the clients of this scheme. It shouldn't be a big deal. And yet they've been fighting it tooth and nail and trying to delay it. To Howlett, the evidence against KPMG seemed overwhelming. Exhibit A, a secret document from 1999, strictly labeled for internal use only, sent to all of KPMG's tax practitioners asking them to flag potential clients for their new offshore company product. The targets were Canada's super rich, high net worth individuals with a minimum of $10 million to invest offshore. KPMG was pocketing 15% of the taxes dodged. KPMG's internal marketing pitch to clients was quite alluring. It promised investments in accumulation of assets with no tax, the ability to receive distributions free of tax, and all of that with confidentiality. But despite all that evidence against KPMG, Howlett noticed the case had inexplicably stalled in court for several years. This is the best opportunity the government of Canada has to actually do something significant. And at the same time, this case is not going forward. I mean, it's been three years, three years. Compare that with south of the border, when KPMG's US partners also got in trouble over another tax shelter scheme. We headed to a suburb of Sacramento, California to meet with a former senior manager of KPMG, tax lawyer Michael Hammersley. A decade ago, he turned whistleblower after witnessing how the firm was helping some of its clients cheat the public treasury. 
I think there was a, a perception that they'd never get caught, which made the cost-benefit work in their minds. Some of the specific um, practices that I observe while at KPMG associated with abusive tax shelters. Heimersley testified in front of the U.S. Senate, and U.S. authorities hit hard. They charged KPMG and several senior executives for having sold abusive tax shelters that hid billions in taxable income. The result? A half a billion dollar plea bargain and three criminal convictions. The environment was transactions that were being sold that were uh, very risky and were not representing the true facts of the transaction. Can you tell us about what these are? Though KPMG US is a separate legal entity from KPMG Canada, we asked Hammersley to review the documents from the Canadian case. It resonates plenty. It is exactly the type of behavior that I saw in the US at the time. When your transaction and the tax results are dependent upon hiding the true facts, you start to cross in potential criminal liability. In Canada, the probe into the KPMG Isle of Man scheme remains strictly a civil matter. This summer, KPMG lawyers told the court they were having confidential discussions with the Department of Justice and the Canada Revenue Agency and hoped to settle the matter out of court. An out-of-court settlement in this case would be a travesty of justice because it would not reveal what is going on. Under the strong leadership of Prime Minister Harper, we are balancing the budget, cutting taxes for families and businesses. Last April, the Minister of Finance, Joe Oliver, stopped at the Vancouver Board of Trade for his post-budget tour. The speech was sponsored by KPMG. And KPMG's Elio Luongo, the firm's top tax executive, was once again on stage. We caught up with Luongo after the speech. Why uh, are you not giving the names to the revenue agency? There's a court order that tells KPMG to hand over the names to the revenue agency. Why are you refusing, refusing to do that? I think you, uh, you need to look into that and you should talk to our communications department about that because uh, you need to understand uh, the details behind that. Thank you. In a later statement, KPMG said it could not comment on client matters, nor will it discuss anything before the courts. For the accounting giant and some of its clients, the brewing scandal appears to be hiding back in the shadows. Their secrets, it seems, are safe for now. For The National, I'm Frédéric Zalak in Vancouver.